This is the Trump Breaking News Network. Here's what's happening. Did Chuck Schumer just threaten Donald Trump? By Tyler Durden. As the financial crisis jolted the nation in September, Senator Charles E. Schumer was consumed. He traded telephone calls with bankers, then became one of the first officials to promote a Wall Street bailout. He spent hours in closed-door briefings and a week in helping congressional leaders nail down details of the $700 billion rescue package. The next day, Mr. Schumer appeared at a breakfast fundraiser in Midtown Manhattan for Senate Democrats. Addressing Henry R. Kravis, the buyout billionaire, and about 20 other finance industry executives, he warned that a bailout would be a hard sell on Capitol Hill. Then he offered some reassurance. The businessmen could count on the Democrats to help steer the nation through the financial turmoil. We are not going to be a bunch of crazy, anti-business liberals, one executive said, summarizing Mr. Schumer's remarks. We are going to be effective, moderate advocates for sound economic policies, good responsible stewards you can trust. The message clearly resonated. The next week. Executives at firms represented at the breakfast sending more than $135,000 in campaign donations. He succeeded in limiting efforts to regulate credit trading agencies, for example, sponsored legislation that cut fees paid by Wall Street firms to finance government oversight, pushed to allow banks to have lower capital reserves and called for the revision of regulations to make corporations' balance sheets more transparent. At times in Congress, Mr. Schumer has teamed up with Republicans, like former Senator Phil Graham of Texas, who aggressively promoted a free market agenda. Mr. Schumer pushed for the Graham Leach Bliley Law, passed in November 1999, which knocked down the walls between investment banks and commercial banks and allowed financial supermarkets to flourish. The law also weakened regulatory oversight by fracturing it among different agencies. From the New York Times article, a champion of Wall Street reaps benefits. Great way to start off the new year for the Democrats. New Senate minority leader, and Wall Street mega defender, Chuck Schumer just went on Rachel Maddow's MSNBC show and warned Donald Trump that U.S. intelligence agencies could retaliate against him for disagreeing with their claims, based on no public evidence thus far, that Russia hacked the DNC. John Podesta and released it to WikiLeaks with the intent of helping Trump win the election. Here's what he said courtesy of the Washington Examiner. The new leader of Democrats in the Senate says Donald Trump is being really dumb for picking a fight with intelligence officials, suggesting they have ways to strike back, after the president-elect speculated Tuesday that his so-called briefing about Russian cyber attacks had been delayed in order to build a case. Let me tell you. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you," said Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer Tuesday evening on MSNBC after host Rachel Maddow informed him that intelligence sources told NBC News that the briefing had not been delayed. Now watch the clip for yourself. I'm certain the near-permanent grin on his face will not be lost upon you either. The exchange is especially disturbing given the CIA's not-so-warm and fuzzy history both internally and externally. For some light reading on the matter, I strongly suggest the following post, How America's Modern Shadow Government Can Be Traced Back to One Very Evil Man, Alan Dulles. Here's a brief passage to whet your appetite. Alan Dulles, the CIA director under President Eisenhower and Kennedy, the younger brother of Secretary of State John Foster Dulles, and the architect of a secretive national security apparatus that functioned as essentially an autonomous branch of government. Talbot offers a portrait of a black and white Cold War era world full of spy games and nuclear brinkmanship, in which everyone is either a good guy or a bad guy. Dulles, who deceived American elected leaders and overthrew foreign ones, who backtacks Nazis and thwarted left leaning Democrats, falls firmly in the latter camp. But what I was really trying to do was a biography on the American power elite from World War II up to the 60s. That was the key period when the national security state was constructed in this country. And where it begins to overshadow American democracy. It's almost like Game of Thrones to me, where you have the dynastic struggles between these power groups within the American system for control of the country and the world. Absolutely. 
the surveillance state that Snowden and others have exposed is very much a legacy of the Dallas past. I think Dallas would have been delighted by how technology and other developments have allowed the American security state to go much further than he went. He had to build a team of cutthroats and assassins on the ground to go around eliminating the people he wanted to eliminate, who he felt were in the way of American interests. He called them communists. We call them terrorists today. And of course the most controversial part of my book, I'm sure, will be the end, where I say there was blowback from that. Because that killing machine in some way was brought back home. Threatened the U.S. president-elect with the CIA. How liberal. The video link for the video is in the article below in our description. This has been the Trump Breaking News Network. Please subscribe and share to stay up to date on the latest news about our president. Be informed.